crafty friends it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I'm going to share a card using Create a Smile stamps and I'm starting with this armadillo stamp from the On the Roll stamp set and eventually I'm going to wind up turning this armadillo into a Christmas card and he's going to actually kind of act like a Christmas ball on the card and I thought it would be fun to show this just because it was an idea. I actually got the idea from my mom. She thought of it. And um, to show you how to use a very much not Christmas stamp to make a Christmas card in a way that this fun and festive and like almost seems like, of course you could do that. You know, like they look like Christmas balls. And, you know, if you had that uh, thought in your head the way that she did, it would seem almost perfect. So. To get started, I wanted to just talk briefly about the coloring in real time. I'm not going to color probably the whole thing, but just a few bits of it to um, explain my process. I'm going to use R35, 37, and 39. I'm going to start by putting the color where I want it to be the darkest, and I'm not going to pull my lightest color all the way to the edge. Just going to pull it in some. I'm going around in with flicking motions. I like to turn my paper as well to help me. I like to be flicking away from me. Some people prefer to flick towards them. It's just a better motion for them. I personally tend towards flicking away. I also tend to, if I'm coloring a small area, just keep my markers open so I can switch from one to the other a little bit faster and easier. So I'm covering that same area with all three colors. The darkest color, which is the R39, I'm probably doing a little bit less than the other colors, just a touch of the R39. And when I have a little bit of everything, I'm going to go back into R37. I am choosing, in this instance, to give my character here, my armadillo, a little bit of dimension by leaving the highlight in the center. There's really probably no instance where the highlight would be in the center. Um, I don't know where my light source is going to be. I haven't actually even designed the whole card yet. I just know that I want him to be colored like a Christmas ball, so I'm starting there. And I'm not worried about light source. If you're the kind of person who wants to create one of those elaborate scenes with light source, you might need to kind of think about, is the light shining from the top or the bottom? And that would affect things. However, again, that's just not what I'm personally going for. So now I'm back to my lightest color and I'm going to pull that lightest color all the way to the center now because I have done most of my coloring. And by extending it to the uh, limits to the line only one time I leave a lighter shadow than if I had continued to go over and continue to blend out the colors. Now I'm noticing that some areas with the R39 are a little bit darker than I would ideally like and I would like just a bit more contrast so I'm just going to go back in with my R39 and I'm using 110 pound recollections cardstock from Michaels and I have found that it holds up to a pretty fair amount of ink so I like it I'm used to it I think that whatever cardstock you choose there's a lot of good options out there but it's important to keep it consistent because different papers act in different ways and so the same techniques that I use to color on this cardstock might be less successful on say an Nina 80 pound which a lot of people recommend and I had a hard time with and I think it's just because it's not what I'm used to and I'm used to a different thickness of paper and a different ink absorption rate but I think that in general when using Copics if you're working quickly while the markers are wet you're going to get a better blend which is one of the reasons that I keep my marker caps open the whole time because I will then be able to switch out the colors and I'll be working while all the markers are wet and then it's not usually like my markers are open for a very long time because I am coloring small images most of the time. So now I'm ready to color in his body. I'm going to use E31, 33, 37, and 39. For the longest time I just had E31 through 37 and I found that I was able to color a lot of critters with that. Brown comes up as a lot as you imagine when coloring critters. A lot of critters in nature are brown. 
You can, of course, add fun colors and color critters and non-traditional colors, which I've done a lot as well. But if you're just looking for some good base browns, wondering which are the best browns to start investing in, I'm personally going to recommend the E3 something, you know, E31, E33. Some people have, a lot of people call them like E33, 31. That's what I kind of got used to. But it's been explained that um, saying it as E31 and E33 is a little bit more accurate. I don't think it really matters as long as you know which one you're talking about in terms of um, communicating with others. But anyway, I recommend the E3 series. So E31 um, all the way through E39. I find that I can get a lot of bang for my buck in terms of being able to color a vast number of critters with just that. Now for some areas of the armadillo, for his, well for most areas of the armadillo, his face, his arm, and his leg, I'm only going to go out to E35. But then his belly has a lot of shadow on it because his arm and his shell and his leg are all kind of coming together to cast a shadow on it. So I'm going to use some darker colors there. I know people have kind of asked about like, you know, why do you shade the way you do or how do you know what shadows to use and um, my system isn't overly complicated but things like that where where objects would cast shadows on each other those things I do consider because that doesn't really change based off light source that's a little bit more easily predictable and consistent so it's something that I personally feel like I can handle and um, use and still enjoy coloring um, I'm just not as much for the elaborate whole one layer card scenes. And I did also want to recommend if you were interested in learning more about Copic coloring, the uh, two people that I would most recommend, although there's a lot of talented artists out there, and again, you probably already know the two people I'm going to mention, but just in case, if you're new, um, I would recommend Sandy Alnock. She has a great Copic class as well that explains all of the color theory and marker principles, and she has her hex chart, which I find to be super helpful. But in terms of just general videos, I would actually recommend Kelly Latavola. She does some gorgeous, gorgeous cards. She explains a lot of her coloring and she also tells some fun stories. Now for the belly, since it is the darkest, I'm actually coming in with the E39. Two shades darker even than any of the other colors I've used so far. I'm going to blend it out with the E37. And I'll finish off with the E35 just to make his belly a bit darker. I think on the first one, I actually only went to E37, so I probably should have kept it consistent there. But that is one of the dangers of talking while I'm coloring. I um, make little mistakes like that. Probably should just put the E39 away so I wouldn't have been tempted to grab it. I'm going to come in here and add a bit more of darker shading just because... I want to um, bring it a little bit closer to the belly because the belly wound up a little bit darker, as I said, since I went all the way to the E39. So I'm just going to put in a touch of E33 to darken it a bit, blend that out with the E31, and then my armadillo is pretty much complete. There's just this little bit of his shell poking out from the other end. Again, that's going to have quite a bit of shadow because it is going to be casting shadow, or it's going to have shadows cast on it from the legs and the body and the face kind of coming down. The light would be blocked by the face. So I'm just going to come in with my darkest R marker, the R39, to color those in. And then that's it. I'm going to color a green version of the armadillo as well before I put my card together, but I just wanted to show you I'll use a similar process, just some cut greens instead of reds. And I'll be back with the rest of the card. So now that I have all of my armadillos colored, which are, I wanted to show you the stamp set, it's from Creative Smiles on a Roll. I have them colored, I cut them out with my brother scanning cut. I don't have coordinating dies, there is not coordinating dies for it because Creative Smile doesn't do coordinating dies, it, um, various reasons, but basically, you know, it's just not uh, the most cost effective thing. And so, um, you know, and, and Christine who runs it prefers to fussy cut personally so I as a scan and cut user don't miss the dies but um, you could fussy cut them or um, I'm actually going to put them directly onto a card so you could have stamped them onto the card and colored them directly onto your paper 
but I um, decided that I would rather um, have them to have a little bit of dimension because I am going to create a rather clean and simple card here. So I actually have a white card base and I also stamped and cut with my scan and cut the wish word from the create a smile make a wish stamp set. So even a lot of companies that do offer coordinating dies don't offer them for like words and so having something like a scan and cut allows you to be able to cut whatever. In this case it did not actually cut the little tittle or the dot for the eye. I'm kind of okay with that. I could draw it in if I wanted to. I could have fussy cut it if I wanted to. Um, but I think I'm just going to leave it off depending on how the card goes. So I have a sort of idea of how I want to lay those out but I also need to fit the sentiment in to make this into a more Christmassy card. So. And I'm going to put this in my mini Misty and I want to keep my word die where it is because I want to place my other stamps that I will be stamping to finish the sentiment around that basic placement knowing where my armadillos are going to go. So I have this sentiment from the same set, the Make-A-Wish set, that says you a Merry Christmas, so we wish you a Merry Christmas. I'm going to try to lay it down as straight and flat as I can here at the very base of my card and close the misty door on it, but then I'm going to be able to fix it. And that's what's nice about the um, mini misty grid lines or the any sort of stamp positioning tool having grid lines. And I hope I don't get my head too much in the way here, but I'm trying to line it up along one of the grid lines to make it a bit straighter. And this just takes a little bit of fussing, but it's worth it. And now, of course, you could stamp a few to make the time worth it. Now my magnets got stuck to the bottom there, so I'll scrape those off. I may want to add a few extra magnets here too. You see I put washi tape on my magnets. It just makes them easier to move around if they get stuck against each other. And normally I would stamp with Versafine ink, but Versafine ink, while it gives a beautiful crisp impression, does take a bit to dry. And since I'll be handling this live, I'm going to use an ink that will dry faster, but I might need to stamp a few times. So here's just some of my favorite things black ink, really any other black ink will do right now. And I'll just have to stamp it a few times to make it crisp. If your ink pad was recently re-inked, it might do a little bit better, but I find that most black dye inks, I have to stamp more than once to get the level of crispness that I personally prefer. But I have heard if you just hold it down longer, sometimes it sinks into the paper more and gives you a crisp impression. When I'm using the Misty, I don't usually worry too much about whether I have to place it down once or twice. I'll put my sentiment back into position. I kind of want it to sort of be sweeping around the You A Merry Christmas a bit. I don't want it to just kind of be laying flat on top. A little sense of movement makes the card a bit more fun. And now I have the We. So we wish you a Merry Christmas, which kind of fitting because there's three little armadillos. So all three of them are doing the wishing. Now, ideally, I would have placed this all down at one time, but since I was having such trouble, lining up that long sentiment, I decided to do it separately. Um, you could, of course, just do them together. It probably would have been faster, smarter. Um, you yeah, know, just didn't this time. And I also wanted to make sure that um, the wish was in its final placement before I did that. So now I have the We Wish You a Merry Christmas sentiment. I haven't glued down the wish yet, of course. I'll have to do that to help finish up the card. Move my Misty to the side, slip those die cuts off. I want to make sure that there's all those eraser fuzz are off. This is directly my card base, so I don't really have as much room for error. I am going for a clean and simple card, so the little smudges are less than ideal. But my Tombow Sand Eraser can fix any little smudge that got on there. I'm going to use some multimedia matte. It's a little bit harder to put some sticky on the back, like something like a two-way tape, like from Elizabeth Crafts, 
onto the back and then cut it with your scan and cut because you could be voiding your scan and cut warranty by having adhesive there. So I'm just going to recommend this glue instead because you know the knife, the cutting tool could get stuck in the adhesive and you're really not supposed to be adding extra things like that but you can certainly give it a try but you know it's your machine, use it at your own risk. I personally am just going to go with the um, glue. It will do the job. So again just trying to position it about in the same place that I had it before gently adhering it down. I did stamp this large wish sentiment with the VersaFine Onyx Black ink but I stamped it a few minutes ago so it's mostly dry right now and I can touch it a bit more but it is a pigment based ink and so it will take some time to dry and you don't want to stick your fingers right in it after you've stamped it. So now I'm ready to do my final placement of my armadillos. I want them to be hanging like ornaments, like Christmas balls. So I'm trying to think about their positioning, which way they could hang that would look kind of comfortable, I guess, as comfortable as it could be to be a Christmas ball. And I want the two red ones not to be perfectly even with each other. I want there to be some interest. So I think I kind of like that placement. The smart thing to do would have been to have some adhesive ready on these. But I do want them to have a line coming behind them. So I think that might be smarter to draw that first before I adhere them down, just in case things don't go perfectly. So I'm going to take a waterproof pen here. Um, a Faber-Castell pen would work great. Any sort of waterproof pen that you have. Oh, the smart thing to do. Here, I have a grid mat underneath. Why am I not using that? That would be the smart thing to do line it up so that I can be sure my line's going to be a little bit straighter with some of the grid lines. And I want my line to go past where my armadillo is because the armadillo will cover up the line. So here's another place I want to put an armadillo. I'm going to line it up with the grid sheet underneath. Draw in my line. Final armadillo is about here, line it up with the grid underneath, kind of scooch him out of the way a bit so that I can make the line all the way underneath where he's going to be. Okay, and then I have the lines for them to hang from. I will just put a little bit of two-way tape behind them, use my ATG gun, tape those on, and that will be it for my card today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafting tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. There will be a link to a blog post that coordinates with this over on the Create a Smile channel and links to where you can find the stamps that are featured. I hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit of a different take on a Christmas card by using some non-Christmas stamps with some more traditional Christmas stamps and for a sort of traditional Christmas scene. Have an awesome day. Thanks for watching. Bye.